hi students uh, welcome to my lectures on uh, processor and uh, plant operator using a simulator and uh, till now we have discussed something about the unit operations in unit processes which can be controlled through a controller okay today actually i'm going to show you the entire plant how i mean entire plant is plant is linked to uh, various control measures and uh, today we are going to see a plant uh, called cement plant uh, from the beginning to the end, what are the different aspects that are related and controlled in a cement plant? And by looking at the plant, what you people need to see, observe, I mean, because entire plant can't be shown on one screen, you have to switch to the different screens on the DCS window. And today I'm going to show you, I mean, the, how a cement is produced. Uh, manufactured what are the different unit processing and unit operations i mean associated with it okay once i go to the dcs window you're going to observe the plant is divided into three aspects uh, initially the uh, mixing zone and from material mixing and the second one comes to the clinkering zone and third is you no know, actual you uh, know uh, cooling you know cement you no know, a final line where, which will go for the packaging sessions so if you watch an entire plant on a DCS window, how it looks like, that's what the today agenda. So whatever you people have learned before that how if I change one parameter on a plant, how it affects the entire plant. You can, once you come to the hands-on session on this particular no software, you'll get to know. Okay, let me go to the uh, uh, plant and how it looks like the moment you open the panel i mean it's a I mean, window i mean the software window you're going to see index page feed side kiln and cement recovery so i told you there are three different screens on you can able to see these are the three different screens one is feed mixing preparation second is clinkering zone where cement is being produced and last is a you know, cooling you know, packaging zone let us go to the feed size okay and the moment uh, uh, this is a first window which is go to the mixing zone and this second window goes to the clinkering zone okay the third window which talks about the packaging grinding mixing of different materials uh, cements to the storage you have to switch to the different screen to see uh, the different things let us come to the first zone which is called mixing zone what happens basic raw materials required uh, for these is clay which is called aluminum oxides and silica, uh, silica oxides these are the forms of clay and lime which is called calcium carbonate which both makes as a raw material for our feed, uh, feed system there is a mixing chamber where the both the raw materials are being mixed here okay and it goes through a series of cyclone separators what is the job of a cyclone separator the job of a cyclone separator here not to separate and and here one, one is grading can be possible in cyclone that means uh, according to the size it can be feed can be as aggregated and second thing is to heat this raw materials because before it goes to the kiln session as you can see the arrow indicating to the kiln that means what are the raw material you have mixed that goes through the series of cyclones you, you follow the arrows you'll understand just follow the arrows okay downward arrow then you see it after the fifth cyclone it goes to the kiln chamber okay there is something that comes from the kiln chamber also that is this arrow which talks about from the kiln that means from the previous from the kiln chamber something is entering to the cyclone and this chamber indicate to the kiln that means something i mean these are the raw materials after having i know it is goes to the kiln chamber what is coming from the kiln means hot gases okay the hot gases which is produced from the calcination and clinkering zone in the rotary kiln it comes from it go, enters the cyclones what what is the job of uh, the gases hot gases that come from the kiln chamber is to heat up the raw materials what are the heat up raw materials this is the what are the raw materials calcium carbonate and clay lime and clay these are the raw materials because you can see the hot gases enters to the cyclones and passes to the cyclones in reverse fashion that means 
the, the raw materials are coming to the downward direction and the hot gases are passing towards the upward direction because by the time the raw material come go to the kiln chamber it will get heated up from the gases which comes from the kiln what is the kiln let us see i hope you understood uh, the flue gas form because the flue gas find exists that means the flue gas which comes from the kiln chamber this is the composition what are the different nitrogens co2 percent is 28 percent nitrogen percent is 70 percent and oxygen and uncombusted oxygen and uh, 1.09 percent and carbon zero percent that means completely combusted okay this is what the composition which exit from the cyclone which are called a hot gases okay let us come to the what is what is the once the raw materials got heated up it goes to the kiln chamber if i click this kiln chamber you enter the kiln zone you can see from the cyclone file it enters the water the raw material feed from the cyclones which enters to kill kill is and one of the react i mean kind of a reaction that happens the clinkering reaction happens this is entirely you can see all the parameters of the given what is the uh, what is the feed rate that is enters this uh, kill i mean uh, rotary kill uh, 360 tons per hour okay what is the inlet temperature 850 degrees centigrade imagine the feed which enters the kiln chamber will be preheated using the gases this is the gases you know water uh, because there is some clinkering reaction happens in which you have to burn okay certain material which is called coal material coal material will be burned inside the chamber what are the and what are the gases that produce in the kiln chamber it goes to the cyclones because to heat up the raw materials which enter in the kiln chamber what happens it will be normally this kiln will be in an inclined fashion though the moment the the you know, kiln chamber is normally rotating fashion once it rotates okay the raw material slowly goes from inside to the exit section that is why uh, the rpm is a four rotations per minute okay this is the rpm that is this kiln chamber will going to get rotated okay the in, in the initial phase calcination that means calcination because if you burn a material in absence of oxygen then automatically we give the word calcination the uh, what happens in the calcination See what is the things that are entering the things calcium carbonate is entering okay calcium oxide co2 aluminium oxide these are the things that are entering what is happening in the calcination zone these are the particular reactions calcium carbonate will be converted to calcium oxides okay now after the calcium reduced to calcium oxide CaO then it slowly enters into clinkering zone in clinkering zone reactions between calcium aluminium and and, and left or any iron that is there in this silica I mean clay the fraction of iron is there everything is going to get reacted it forms clinker what is the clinker C3A, the tricalcium aluminate, dicalcium sulfate, tricalcium sulfate, okay, uh, uh, tetracalcium aluminoferrite. These are the different that forms a composite. This is called the cement. Technically, it's called a clinker. <coughs> These are the material that is going to produce in the clinkering zone. With the high temperature that happens in the clinkering zone, you can see the temperature in the exit temperature 1400 degrees centigrade. That means it is close to the I mean uh, boiling point so the melting points of certain metals which are going to get react to form so these particular intermetallic compounds are going to get formed okay these are the things that happens in the calcination zone and this is the temperature in the calcination zone the temperature is around 1125 degree centigrade in clinkering zone 1400 degrees centigrade the outlet means 23 tons per hour this is the actual industry process it's not a large scale process we are discussing about okay once but and you can observe the other things okay what is the compositions what is the clinker rpm what is the length of the kiln 67 meters slope in degree 7.2 degree the normally this is a 7 point degree slope on which it is getting rotated at a i mean uh, uh, and uh, with this inclination and rpm the retention time is 5.9 minutes that means a material which enters here for it to exit it takes around uh, the 5.99 minutes this is the retention time of feed that is retaining in this particular rotary kiln okay chamber okay uh, and what happens see how the metal is getting heated up the coal will be burnt okay uh, with certain control you can see the you can see the temp, uh, a controller you can see it's a simple controller the flow rate set point is 15 tons per hour of coal has to be burned 
inside this clinkering zone okay and uh, that is uh, because now you can able to tweak this particular parameter and observe what happens if we reduce increase my coal <coughs> burning rate okay and this is a particular reactor which controls the air because for the you to burn the coal you need oxidizing agent that is called air will help in you know burning the coal so flow rate of air and coal to be maintained here so always excess amount of air has to be circulated to make sure the complete combustion happens and also you need you should not be so much excess that it will compromise the temperature inside which is required for 1400 degrees centigrade so always you, because there is a preset design value for you have to pump this much amount of air to this much amount of coal okay and this is the next let us see what happens the material which uh, you know, uh, exits the clinkering zone which is called clinker will go to the cooling session what happens in the cooling session from the kiln you will see this much amount of flow rate per hour at 14 degree centigrade 1400 degree centigrade material is exiting the clinker then it goes to the uh, you can see this is called screw conveyor or belt conveyor on which the material will be transported now from the bottom you have to cool down with the, because there are four fans okay you can able to uh, tweak uh, i mean you can uh, in the i mean you if you want to do what happens if i turn off the fans what happens if i turn on the fans for the, you you can able to do all kinds of uh, <coughs> things using this particular simulator program so the air which is used as a cooling medium so presently the air flow rate you can say something about set value 551 tons per hour of air at 35 degrees centigrade is go going to the cooling unit where you have to reduce the temperature let us say 1400 to 345 degrees centigrade that is a job of a cooling unit here okay you have the different fans okay uh, one second so you have uh, you have different things to do one second let me check whether it's a plant is in okay automobile. now once uh, the material got cooled that means clinker it will go to the grinding and mixing zone there you have to set an amount of gypsum is being mixed into the grinding and mixing zone the reason for you to mix the gypsum is to reduce the settling time of the clinker because uh, if you remember the construction the people used to mix the you know a cement with water okay the moment it touches the water the hydration reaction takes place and concrete is going to get formed because hard material is going to form because gypsum what happens it will delay the process so that because the man, man needs some time to mix the cement and apply it on the walls or wherever the construction takes place so to delay the time of the i mean hydration reaction i mean i mean uh, it, it gypsum is being mixed into the particular mixing zone once you have the gypsum mixed with clinker now it became a cement and finally the cement 20 281.3 tons per hour of cement goes to the storage okay this is the complete plan now you can observe what are the unit operations and unit process happens in the complete cement industries as we have learned in my earlier lectures that uh, how to change the set points of a controllers and if i change what happens uh, uh, if i change example uh, set value it is around 8 tons per hour of gm gypsum being mixed automatically if i make uh, 15 okay then what happens okay suddenly maybe alarm alarm will be triggered we are going to hear that we need to observe what is happening okay fine so what are the things you can observe uh, that it may be change the final composition is getting changed because you are adding mix uh, gypsum automatically the final exit composition of the cement which goes for the storage is going to get uh, changed like that you can uh, turn off and on few systems what happens if we increase the air flow rate let us say uh, if uh, let us say if i increase the let us say 700 okay what happens if i increase my air flow rate okay the temperature uh, the, is further if i increase my air flow rate the cooling system is much robust and the exit temperature of the cement which comes from the clinker is being further reduced so in what what is going to happen okay which one and uh, you can observe that by changing the air flow rate example by changing the air flow rate this particular and this particular this only the system that is getting affected 
because schooling doesn't have anything i mean uh, if it is requirement higher for packaging and cementing if you require the higher temperature or for mixing you higher temperature is the better so accordingly we will choose the process and uh, this is what the entire plant uh, like that in future we might pro procure i mean uh, the fertilizer plants okay and we might procure the i mean complete refinery how i can operate the complete refinery so today you have i have shown you i mean what you people have learned can able to see that how the cement plant you can you have to observe where is the final control element way, way uh, which one is controlling this particular valve what is connected to you can see the uh, this particular valve is connected to particular flow rate once you change the set point the gypsum is getting mixed and in uh, you can see the exhaust you know? the excess exhaust will be uh, thrown out to the chimneys okay this is what you see whenever you go to a cement plant the how many tons of you no know, exhaust will be released 77 tons per hour of exhaust is getting released into the you no know, air okay uh, what happened these are the burners ignition switch uh, this color indicates burner is on i can turn off the switch okay see i can turn off the switch see what all of a sudden what happens <clears throat> okay then you can play with many things this is the beauty of a simulator that actually you can't play with the plant right you can play with the simulator and see the consequences okay you some alarm will be triggered what is the alarm air, air flow high zip some flow rate you have you no know, changed okay accordingly the retention time you can change the retention time that means amount of uh, time that is spent in the clinker can be altered uh, let me show you amount of time uh, okay see if i uh, increase uh, reduce the rotation time right now it completely a 4 rpm i can increase the retention time in the clinker i mean react, reactor by uh, if i 2 rpm that means uh, if i reduce my rpm automatically my retention time will get increased there are different things we can able to do with this i mean the beauty i mean and the, what is the you can see actually in industry what is the typical diameter of the kiln 4.35 meters what is the length of the kiln 67 meters slope what is 7.2 degree slope will be there slope in positive i mean four degrees okay, these are the different things okay uh, those who don't have opportunity to see the cement plant can have this simulator and see exactly what is happening and you can once you go to the cement plant now you can relate you know, what you have learned and correlate with the industries and uh, this is the whole whole object of being running a simulator is to train you well i mean this is what the industry requirements okay uh, hope uh, let me come back so this is my as such as uh, i mean uh, final i mean a kind, kind of uh, no pre final kind of okay um, and that's everything i'm going to teach uh, through the uh, workshop which i'm going to organize in the near future uh, to the students and those are uh, really wanted to learn this kind of software can be i mean i'm going to i mean uh, because this uh, university situation in